In this video we're going to be taking a look at J2E5 and um, that's part of the J2E package that you get access through, uh, through your Hub account. So I've logged into Hub and I've opened J2E by clicking on the J2E icon and that's taken me through to the J2 launch page um, and you can see the J2E5 icon here with a red background so to open it I just need to click on that icon. So J2E5 is one of my favourite uh, platforms um, on J2E and that's because of its versatility. So I can use J2E5 in absolutely any subject. I've seen it being used um, in the foundation phase, key stage 2 and also in key stage 3. You can see this A4 piece of paper on the screen. It's a bit misleading because it suggests that I've got um, a blank page to write on similar to Word or Google Docs for example. Um, it's worth noting that this is not a word processor. So if you want to write, this, write a story or to write um, a diary or a letter or something along those lines, this probably isn't the best platform to do that. You, you can write a story on it, but there's more functionality and there's, there's, there's more suitable platforms to do that such as Word or such as Google Docs because they are um, word processors. What what J two E call this is a a piece of digital paper. So this A four page is a piece of digital paper. What they mean by digital paper is a space where you can combine different uh, formats. For example, I can include text. I can include images. I can include tables, graphs. I can include um, videos. I can even include sound clips um, within my page. So essentially my page will become interactive, so the content that will be there will be interactive, so there will be videos and, and sound clips for them to click play on and so on. Um, so what we're going to do in this video is we're going to have a look at um, how you can include all these different formats on your page. Uh, it's worth noticing, so if you think back a couple of years ago uh, when people wanted to create a poster or they wanted to combine images and text uh, people tend to tend to turn to um, uh, Microsoft pa uh, Publisher and the reason behind that is Publisher is quite easy to use because you can move your text and you can move your images quite freely uh, and place them where you wanted them to be so the same idea uh, is true with uh, J2E5 so if I do include images and text it's quite simple for me then to place them and drop them where exactly where I want them to be um, so it's quite a nice feature so we're going to start off uh, now with the text elements it says here at the top of the page click anywhere and type so I can literally click anywhere on my page and type as you can see It's a bit different to any word processors because on a word processor you've got lines that are programmed into the page. So on Word, for example, you can only write on the line. You cannot write between the lines. This is a bit different because it's a blank canvas. There's no lines that are programmed into it. So anywhere I type, I can literally... Uh, sorry, anywhere I click, I can literally start, start typing. So to move that text now, I just double click on it and then I can drag it anywhere I want. On the right hand side, I've got my fonts and I've got my colors and I can resize it and so on. So these are the type of things that we are well used to by now. Um, it's quite similar to any, any of the package. Um, so I'll just delete that. So that's how you include text on your page. Um, you can include paragraphs, uh, you can include Singular words, you can include titles and so on. So it's quite, quite, quite um, similar to any other platform that you use. You've got your bold, italic, underline, your alignment, and so on here. Bullet points, uh, numbering systems, and so on. So we're going to delete that. I'm going to jump now straight into uh, the images. So the images are all stored under this um, green person in the window here. So if I click on that, that's your pictures icon. So by clicking on that. Um, that will take me through straight away to another green person in, 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 a, in a square or in a window. And that takes me through to all my pictures and my files. So these are the images and videos and sound clips that I've used in the past. And anything that I've used in the past is stored in my files. So in my J2, J2E cloud, they are all stored. So I can reuse anything that I've used in the past. 
More often than not, your pupils will go on to the second option, which is the planet here, and this is the search icon. So, as opposed to going on to Google Images and um, and having to find the picture there, copy and paste that image over, when they expand the image, they lose the quality and it appears pixelated, and straight away the work uh, loses that sort of professionalism. Um, you're not going to get this problem here, because I can search the internet directly from this planet. So if I'm going to have a look for um, planet Earth, so I'll type the word Earth in, straight away it's found me 97 pictures of the Earth that I can use. So these images are copyright free, so if I just drag this image and drop it onto my page, what's good about this now is I can actually expand the image to fill the whole page and it won't lose the quality. So as you can see I've expanded that now to fill most of the page and the quality is still very high. So these images are all high quality images that you can use just by dragging and expanding the image. There's another feature, um, it's quite a quirky feature that you can use at this point. So I've dragged my image onto the page, I've expanded it got this option here to convert to a jigsaw. Again, it's a bit of a quirky feature. Uh, it's there if you want to use it. So you can ha um, create a jigsaw of up to 100 pieces. And then you can scatter that. And obviously the job will be putting that back together. Um, some problem solving skills there, some thinking skills and so on. But again, some also some fun things that you can do with it like that. So I can just solve it and I can convert it back to a photo. So just that you're aware that that's something that is available if, if you want to use that type of thing. So I've got my image, um, and again, it's quite straightforward. I can just drag and drop that anywhere on my page. As you can see, I haven't got any margins, so I can go over the margins and so on. So the images are quite straightforward. Just go over it once again. More often than not, you'll go onto the planet and you'll search for images from there. So the next example I'm going to share with you is um, I'm going to share a, an idea that I've, I've I've done it quite a few times in my own class. Um, I, I'm going to look at a science inquiry. I'm going to look at how J2E can support us uh, support my pupils when they do their science inquiry. If you think about the steps that are involved in a science inquiry, the, the inquiry we're going to look at uh, in this video is. Um, looking at the heartbeat uh, and the question that I'm going to set to my class is how will running around the yard affect my heartbeat? So that's a question. So they're going to design their um, inquiry then to, to try and answer that question. And What they, most of the pupils did is they ran around the yard uh, in, a number of times and after each lap they measured their heartbeat and they saw then the pattern um, that happened after each lap and so on. So if you look at the sort of components within that inquiry, first of all they had to plan what they were going to do, they had to um, discuss their predictions, what do they think that was going to happen, they had to discuss how they are going to ensure it was a fair test, then they had to um, do the actual inquiry itself, they had to do the, do the, do the experiments, they had to um, they had to um, capture the data, then they had to turn that data into a graph, they had to um, analyse the data, and then at the end they had to come up with some sort of conclusion. So there's various steps that, that's, that was part of any science inquiry. So what we can do with J2E5 to help ease that and help, help possibly um, reduce the workload is we can put some titles here, so I'll put plan, put predictions, I'll put fair test. And if I had more time I'd uh, change the font and make it look a bit more colourful. If we click on this um, speaker and this film icon, we've got an option here to record sound. So if I click on record sound, that will then ask me uh, to record, and then I record my uh, voice then and I, and I talk through my plan I record what my, my prediction is going to be I record how this is going to be a fair test so I think the more I run around um, the more laps I, I run around the yard the higher my heartbeat will be because my 
my body's going to need more oxygen, uh, so my heart's going to have to pump uh, my blood around my body a bit quicker. So that's my prediction. So once I've recorded it, I can drop it here. That is there. Um, that will save me potentially 10, 15 minutes of, of writing. If you've got pupils uh, with additional needs, pupils might be good verbally, but they struggle to sort of get, get it down on paper, that's a very, very viable option for them to help record uh, their their ideas. So again, I can do this for the other for the other two. This is what I plan to do in my in my experiment. So that's what they did the code. They drop that there, and the same goes for the fair test. So we're going to make sure that the same person is uh, is timing our laps. The same person is going to be counting. Um, our our pulse after each lap, and we're going to make sure that each lap is the same distance. So that's a fair test, and so on. So within a couple of seconds now, I've I'm, I've been able to um, do the same type of thing that would have usually taken me nearly half a lesson with with my class usually. Uh, and again, I'm not telling you to do this every time. It's just a different way sometimes for you, for you to do this, which means that you can possibly work through a whole. Um, science inquiry in, in one lesson or in one afternoon. Um, right, the next part is going to be looking at um, how we conclude the table to, to record the data. I've got this table, table icon on the top on my, on my screen, so I'll click on that and I get now to um, select the number of rows and columns. It's worth noting here, whatever I put in here, I'll get an extra column and an extra row. That's for giving titles to the columns and to the rows. So if I select three and two, it's going to be four rows, uh, sorry, four columns and, and three rows. So if I click OK, and then it's a matter of dropping my uh, my table wherever on my page I, I, I need it. So we have Sean, and we've got Thomas. They're running around the yard three times, quite a large yard, so that should be enough. Um, and then I'm recording the data. So after each lap, I record the pulse. So Sean started off 79, then she went up to 92, and she finished off at 103. Thomas was 84, then he was 99, and then he finished at 112. So there we go. Suddenly now, just within a couple of seconds, recorded my data, included that into my table. And I can just move this table around to anywhere on my page. It was quite, f it's quite um, refreshing to be able to move stuff and drop them anywhere that I want on my page. Next step is for me to turn this into a graph. So I select the table and I then click on the graph button or the graph icon at the top of my page. Straight away, it offers me now four types of graph I can use. So you can have this discussion with your pupils now, what type of graph is the most applicable, is the most suitable for me to use uh, in this situation and why. So we can look at stuff like the uh, number of variables I've got, I've got on, in my chart and my data. In this instance, most suitable graph will be a, a line chart. I give this a title, so um, Pulse and Query, and then I click OK. So that instantly creates my graph, and you can see I can drop this anywhere on my page that I need. But if I actually look at the graph, it's not correct. So it suggests to me there's a connection, there's a relation now between Sean's first lap and Thomas's first lap. Sean's second lap and Thomas's second lap, and so on. So there's something not quite right in the way that this graph has been set out. And I quite like this feature because it, again it spurs that discussion with your pupils. Well, why is this not? In, why, why, is, why is that graph incorrect? Um, and the reason in this instance is because the graph has read the relation in the data down the columns. So it suggests now then lap one, Sean's lap one is connected with Thomas's lap one, as opposed to reading the relation across the rows. So there's a connection between Sean's first and second and third lap and Thomas's first, second, and third lap. So what you need to do to um, to correct this problem is click on the graph, and you can change now that the data series are in rows or columns. Well, in this instance, is reading across the rows. So we should change that to rows, and that will then rectify the problem. So you can see now Thomas's line 
that connects his first, second and third lap and the same goes for Shan. So that is now correct. So I quite like that feature because, again, as I said, it brings up that discussion of pupils. Rather than just clicking on that graph button and taking it for granted that the graph is correct, it means that people then have to really study their graph to see whether it's correct or not. So I can move on now to include a sound clip. So I'm going to analyse my data. Uh, this graph shows that the pulse of each pupil has, has increased at the end of every lap. So I can see what my data shows and so on. So my interactive page is now taking shape. So I've got the plan prediction fair test. I've got my data. I've got my analysis. I could even go one step further now. I can include a video of my pupils actually doing the inquiry itself. And to do this, you'll need an iPad. And on, on an iPad, you can get an app. It's a free app, and it's called J2 Launch. So what a pupil would do is they'd use the iPad then to record the video. Um, or they can even record the plan, the predictions, the fair test. Or they can even take a picture if they've jotted some notes or made a diagram to support the plan and so on, they can take a picture or record the video using the J2 Launch app. When they use J2 Launch, they log in using the hub details. They're then able to upload um, any videos or pictures. They can upload that directly onto their um, J2E account. So back onto the computer now then. What I can do is I can go onto the pictures icon and I'll go onto my files and any videos or pictures that you've uploaded from your iPad will appear at the top of the list here. I'll just scroll down and I'll find the video that I've got recorded earlier on. There you go, this is a video. So we'll pretend that this is a video of the, pupil, of the pupils running around the yard. So I can include this, I can expand it and so on. Um, and I can even write a little introduction just to show, uh, just to say, explain what's going on during uh, that video. So, although this is doesn't it doesn't look very nice, a pupil now would be able to change the font, uh, put a colourful background in, make it look a bit nicer. All I've done here is shown you all the features and functionality that you can include on, on your page. To see what you've done, you need to click on this View button. That takes you through to this screen. Essentially, you can see that the A4 page has disappeared. So, essentially, you've created a, a web page, a single web page that is interactive so I can click on these um, play sound uh, to play the sound clips so I think the more I run around um, the more so it's an interactive page I can click play on the video I can hover over the graph to see the data and so on if I click back on the edit mode now then um, what's important to consider now is if you print this piece of work off and stick this in the book, obviously you lose these uh, verbal sound clips, you lose the interactivity of the graph, and you won't be able to see the video. So there is another option to save you from having to print this. If you, if you really want to include the evidence in your books, first thing you need to do on J2E5 is save. So this isn't similar to the Google products or the Office 365 products. They save automatically. With J2E, you've, you've literally got to click on the Save button. So it's more, a bit more traditional. So we've got this disk icon. I click on that, and I call this Pulse. And I save it. So that's now been saved. If you want to include it in your book, I'll go back to the J2 Launch page. And I've got My Files section here. So if I click on My Files, that will open all your content. So I can see this is the one I've just completed. This is a Pulse piece of work. So to save me from having to print it, I can go to this um, green circle with the eye inside it. I can click on it, and I can click on Share. So by clicking on Share, if you can see straight away, I've got this link. So this link takes anyone who's got the link, they'll, they'll take them through to my piece of work. So I can submit this link via Google Classroom. So if my teacher set me a task to present an inf information on whatever the, to the topic is, I can create the work on J2E and I can submit that link then through Google Classroom. The only thing that's worth noting here is you need to change this from private to publish. So any pupil are sharing this piece of work with a teacher, they need to make they need to publish the work first of all. 
if they leave it as private, if you click on this link, you won't get access to the work. So you need to publish uh, the link straight away. So as I said, this link is there if they want to use it on Seesaw, if they want to use it on Class Dojo, if they want to use it on Microsoft Teams, Google Classroom, whatever you use to contact and work with your pupils, you can use that link. Another option, if I click on the on the eye again, is QR code. If I click on that, it creates a QR code that will take the user directly then through to this piece of work. That's handy if you want to uh, include evidence in your books. So if your book's going for book scrutiny, at least then whoever's scrutinising the book will be able to scan that QR code and get access to the full interactive page that the pupils created. That way you don't lose um, you don't lose those sound clips, you don't lose those videos and so on. One thing's worth noting here, if you do create a QR code, you've still got to publish the work first of all. So the first step is obviously publishing it, and then create a QR code. So there we go. Um, that's J2E5 in a nutshell. I've, I've, I've discussed this from a scientific inquiry perspective today, but you could include this in absolutely any subject. Um, I remember when I used to... Uh, I used to use this in uh, physical activity lessons or in sport lessons. So pupils, they um, they were practicing their gymnastic movements, and what they did, they filmed each other doing the movements. They placed the video on a J two E five page, and then they they then analysed their performance. So what what did they do well? What could they improve the next time, and so on. Same goes for music lessons. So any performance that happened was recorded. It was uploaded onto a J two E five page. Um, and then it was analysed, so it brought that sort of um, uh, evaluative aspects into those subjects. It's very versatile, and the idea of combining all of these formats in one page is, is quite a nice idea.